seemed like just yesterday, man. Uh, but it's like been 25 years I've been stuck out here and uh, you lose track of time, you know? Uh, when you don't have a reason to get up and go to work or, or anything, you, you lose track of days and the days lose track of years and before blink your eyes and it's been 10 years, 20 years, you know? <laughs> There's camps everywhere out here. Hundreds of camps. Elderly, young kids that I got uh, that they don't have nowhere to go. They come out here. It's not fair. It's not right, and I don't know what to do about it. I, I am I am without resources. the American River. From its source in the Sierra Nevada at Mountain Meadow Lake, it runs 120 miles southwest to its confluence with the Sacramento River. Hundreds of years ago, it was home to the Maidu Indians, who used its resources for their survival. Today, a new group of roughly 400 people has taken shelter along its banks, some of them by choice and others who are forced to call it home. The river, I, li I love the river. I do. You know, you can wash up, you can just stay cool. I've even slept by the river, by the water a couple of times. I, I really enjoyed that. I don't know, it's hard for me to live with anybody, really. You know, because I've been so alone on, for a long time. Over several weeks, I spent time with people like Mary, who've been homeless longer than I've been alive. Each of them had their own reasons for ending up outside, but for many of those now living along the American River, they share at least one thing in common there aren't enough beds in Sacramento to shelter them at night. So I'd rather just be out here until, you know, something comes up for me. And I feel safe right here, out here, with me and my dogs. On any given night in Sacramento, nearly 5,600 people are experiencing homelessness. The majority of them are sleeping outside. The city lacks the number of beds needed to shelter everyone. And even when a bed's available, people with pets or who have drugs in their system are often turned away. I know they're cheap, so it's kind of hard to see. There's a lot of people out here that, that just don't bother anybody, just like to live outside, you know? No rules. Many of the city's homeless shelters and services are located in the Dos Rios Triangle, between downtown and the American River, making the American River Parkway a prime spot to set up camp which until September 2018 would have been illegal. But a ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ruling, commonly known as the Boise decision, changed all that. And basically what it said was, is that there's not enough bed space, you can't criminalize sleeping. It did not state that you have to allow the degradation of, of land and other safety issues associated with some of the elements, not all, but some of the elements of homeless with addiction, drug use, syringes, which becomes a public safety issue. Since Stone's Rangers can no longer cite the homeless for unlawful camping, they've dramatically increased tickets for things like littering, carts on the parkway, and tying ropes to trees. For every tie that he had in his camp, tying off to a tree or a brush or any, any, any piece of, of, of Mother Nature, he got some sort of a write-up or, or a citation, or he got marked somehow for it. Every little tie-off. So that's 30 charges yep. of tying. I mean, I don't, that's, the, that's the extreme. As tickets for illegal camping went down, other tickets went up fairly dramatically for shopping carts on the parkway and tying ropes to trees. You know, what's your response to that? The number of citations themselves, I believe, have not increased. So it's not like we're writing more citations. We're writing about the same number of citations every month, but just for different, different, um, violations to let them know that there are still rules in the parkway that they must follow. Even though the courts have said that you have to allow them to sleep, there are still rules in the parkway that we expect them to follow as we would expect any parkway visitor to follow. Cowboy coffee. So what we did is we just filled a pot with water. Coffee grounds, like a handful of coffee grounds. And just pop them right in there. Make it a little bit more, let's make it a little bit strong. And once it starts boiling, I pull it off right away because that foam, that foam is oily. And when you want that oil, that oily coffee, is, mm, it's got a good flavor to it. So you know, Casa Brown's coming out. 
Oh yeah, that's real good. Living along the American River takes work and life moves slowly. Critics of the growing homeless population often ask, why don't these people just get a job? Yeah, the thing about getting a job is, you know, the, when I show up at work, this is the way I'm gonna look, right? I don't have a shower, I don't have, I don't, I don't have, you know, uh, so uh, I go to work and I work all day. And then once I get off work, I have to go searching for food. I have to go search for water, uh, it's shelter. Uh, do you want me working in your office with you looking like this? I used to drive to work thinking, you know, that guy in the corner bum and change, yeah, get a job, you know. But I didn't realize I was a paycheck away from being that guy. Or worse. Mary says it's a full-time job trying to keep her section of the river clean. She knows visitors to the parkway are tired of seeing the mounds of trash piling up from the homeless. So she does what she can to help. My day around here is just working on the next part of the hill to make sure it's clean, you know, make sure there's no needles and there's going to always be a needle popping out somewhere, you know. Coming in here, it was all trash and me and my cousin got rid of it all in one day. This ain't our home. It's a notion Sacramento Park Rangers don't let those living along the river forget. While they can't cite them for camping, they can make them move. They told me that I had to vacate. I had like 72 hours to vacate the spot that I was lucky that I was that we were here because otherwise they would have taken my two puppies and took all my stuff. I, I don't want to leave because I feel like I'm abandoning my dog, my dead dog. In September, the rangers shot and killed April's dog, Lover. They told her they feared for their lives when the dog, who April said was on a leash, came running at them. But April thinks she was targeted because her boyfriend, Jason, had given the rangers so much trouble in the past. I don't want to leave here because to me it's a crime scene and they murdered my dog. So. Dogs are a common sight in the camps along the river. Not only do they make loyal companions, but they're also used as protection and as an early warning system against intruders. Park ordinance allows for dogs if they're kept on a strong leash no longer than six feet and under the full control of their owners at all times. If not, rangers are authorized to shoot any animal posing an imminent threat to human safety if alternative methods are not reasonably available or would likely be ineffective. But the killing of April's dog wasn't the only one we heard about. At least two other people said that they had their dogs killed this year by the rangers. And the ranger's standing there and my friend was reaching out to grab my dog and the ranger shot him. Shot him in the face. Yep. So we asked Chief Doan about the allegations. How often would you say that your rangers kill uh, dogs or any kind of animals on the parkway? Kill? Um, not very frequently at all. I think since I've been here, um, there's been, in four and a half years, I think we've had two that resulted in the, in the death of the animal. Chief Doan later revised those numbers, saying since 2015, rangers have fired their service weapons at six dogs, killing three of them. ABC 10 submitted a public records request to get an even clearer picture of how often rangers were discharging their firearms at animals, but reports of use of force against animals are exempt from public release. No matter how bad it seems, it really ain't that bad. It could be so much worse. You know, we could be in like uh, Iraq or something where, you know, they're warring all the time or got no water. Man, it'd really be hard to live in that place if you were homeless. We have no way to win, but this isn't a battle. And if it is, somebody failed to tell me. Despite the ongoing tensions with the Rangers, or maybe because of it, there remains a strong sense of community in the camps along the river. There's an order to the chaos, and for the most part, people look out for one another. Thank you very much. Even when it seems like everyone else is looking the other way. We help each other out out here. You know what I mean? It's important for us as a group, the, uh, as, as a people, because there's really more people out here than you, than you can actually see. I'm, I feel safe here. I'm comfortable. It don't feel like home, but it feels more like home than anywhere else. So I would love to be inside. I really would. I think I felt the best when I didn't have nothing. 
you know, of the freest, you know. And that's how Jesus did it, didn't he? He didn't have nothing. He traveled and stayed at different people's houses and and fed people with a couple loaves and a couple fish, right? <laughs>